I, I'm going to I'm gonna fly right into it. Coach O was let go, or they came to an agreement, or whatever it was announced. after it's a term, we did, It's a determination. It's a separation. Yeah, it's a separation. And it was announced after we uh, did the reaction show on Sunday, which always seems to happen for whatever reason. It feels like when we do this show for as long as we have, that news breaks almost immediately when we get done with stuff, right? It just always yeah. happens. So, so this is our first time to actually get to talk about it. Before I do the rundown of where you can find the show, all that good stuff, uh, let's go ahead and j- uh, jive. Let's dive into uh, your thoughts. I mean, you are an LSU guy. Yeah, I mean, you you had, uh, well, I, you can kind of see it on the screen there. You've got your LSU placard in the back. You know, coach, you got your, your signed picture and everything. Let's let's talk about what's going to go on with uh, with the Bayou Bengals here. I've got twelve names that I want you to give me a quick response on as to what you think about the hire or what you would think about the hire, et cetera, et cetera. Right? I just want a, a quick response of what you would think if that was the guy. Does that sound right? It's fine. All right, let's do it. First one, Mel Tucker. I'm I'm warming up. I'm warming up to that a lot. Okay, uh, Billy Napier. He's way down the list. Okay. He's way down the list. <laughs> Dabo Sweeney. Not it, it's not gonna happen and it's not even worth talking about. Okay. And I'd be pissed. <laughs> okay, that's that's what I was looking for. Like Does it, he bring Brett? Does he bring Brett? Because what happens to Vittables? Does a new guy take over? Because we know Brett doesn't want to be a head coach. Does a new guy take over that Clemson hires and just says, Hey, you have to keep Brett? If he brings Brett, I would swallow it better than I would without it. But I don't want Dabo. I think Dabo's fake. You know that. So, and it's not going to happen. That's not realistic. That is sports talk fodder. And that's what I'm going to say for over half of these. Just so that we go ahead and get it right, it's Brent Venables. Just so Brent, that we. I'm Brent. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Just so that the, the commenters don't have something to feast on here. Uh, Urban Meyer. Not going to happen. Okay. I wouldn't. I'll tell you this. It, that's one of those where I would sell my soul, though. Like, like, like I hate it today. But if he is the coach, I won't spend any time talking about it after this moment. He, if he became the coach, I just have to find a way to make peace with it because I know he's going to do a good job. Yeah, yeah. You love LSU more than you hate Urban Meyer. That's right. That's totally fair. Uh, Luke Fickle won't happen. Not worth talking about. Okay. Mario Cristobal it won't happen. Not worth talking about. You don't think so? You don't think there's any nope. chance that he would come zero. Down? Zero chance. Won't happen. He won't even be offered the job. Won't even be considered. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin, my number one choice. Number one choice. Number one choice. Interesting. Okay. Um, Mark Stoops. I like Mark Stoops. He's in the conversation. I'd be happy. Okay. James Franklin. He's probably number two choice. And and so let me, can I ask you this? His we name got- keeps getting thrown around every time a big job opens. Is it widely known that he's not happy at Penn State? Can somebody explain that? It's I, I will say it's not that it's widely known because I don't because I don't know that I just I find it strange that he gets brought up for every big that job. He gets brought up for all these big jobs, and does that mean he's actively looking for a job outside of Penn State? His agent has let it be known that there are a few other opportunities around the country that he might be interested in leaving Pennsylvania for, from what so I, I understand. I think early reports from somebody else, I've listened to like nine different guys on all this stuff, and some of the stuff they say I believe and some of the stuff I think is bullshit, but I've listened about, and some of them said that he's been probed and it's been made clear he's not very interested, but they're not going to take that as a no. LSU is going to continue to push that, which I found I found to be interesting, but that's fine. I mean, he is he like his career has for the most part been in the Northeast, but he is one of those uh, personable he's a, coaches. He's a, but like, he's a Southern guy, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, he did well at Vanderbilt before, but before that, he was the offensive coordinator at Maryland. You know, he. I will tell you this: I think he's one of those coaches that would be able to relate to whatever culture he is tossed into. Oh, no. So, yeah. I think he'd be he, fine. No, he's a great coach. I think he'd succeed anywhere he goes. Uh, another part of this is the fact that they are, there has been a lot of talk about wanting to look at uh, more diverse candidates. Well, that's uh, not just been LSU. a lot of talk. That's been that's been uh, hammered home. Like, that's been that actually reported? Direct, that's directly told to Woodward. Because Woodward's, Woodward's first choice, I do believe, is Lane. But I don't think Woodward's going to get what he wants. 
I figured his first choice would be Jimbo. I didn't even put Jimbo on here, but uh, Jimbo's not an option. Jimbo won't be his choice. Jimbo won't get an interview. Jimbo won't get a call. Yeah, no, I so, agree. So let me let me clear that up for people, okay? Because I've listened to enough people who know what they're talking about. I'm not that. This is me regurgitating information that other people have given me, okay? But I'm telling you this, and this is the absolute truth. In 2015, Jimbo burned too many bridges with too many of the big-time boosters, and those boosters made it abundantly clear to Woodward, if you want the buyout money, you don't give him a fucking call. He doesn't even get a call. Done and done. Yeah, bottom line. All right, so we talked James Franklin. I got three more. Bill O'Brien. Uh, Bill O'Brien's probably my third choice. Really? And, I, and I'm and i going to tell you this. Him and Franklin are one and are two and two of A. Interesting. I think Bill O'Brien is an unbelievable coach. We have talked about this. Too many people don't know how to separate the job that he did as a GM and the job that he did as a coach. This guy was a 14-point lead in the, fourth, in the second half of a game against the Chiefs at home in Arrowhead, on, well, on the road for him, in Arrowhead, to play for the Super Bowl. Yeah. All right? And that team, outside of having Deshaun Wap- Wap- Watkins and Hopkins, <laughs> were – listen, fuck it. You know who I'm talking about, damn it. <laughs> Outside of having those two guys, that team was trash. That team was garbage. No, it definitely and two was. two stars. Two stars, garbage across the board after that. They were 14 points up on them in the second half. They should have never been in the playoffs. You you have mentioned coach. this. You've mentioned this before, by the way. And yes. you you get elevated to a point of failure. There was yes. no reason Bill O'Brien should have ever been a GM. No, if he was <laughs> never the GM, I swear to you, he would still be there, and they would still be winning playoff games. You yes. see the rest of that conference? Yeah. He'd be dominating that conference right it's, now. It's pretty. It's pretty garbage. Other, other than maybe the Titans, but even even they are so <sighs> inconsistent that it doesn't matter, right? They, they don't scare anybody. Agreed. Dave Aranda. No, he's. I love Dave Aranda. You know that Dave Aranda has been a head coach for now. This is his second season. No, yes, and as good as as he has done this season, uh, I think short of a record. Well, that and I don't think you know if LSU gets to a point where they're trying to relive twenty nineteen all over again, can't do it. it, Then you're in way bigger problems, right? Uh, Way more issues. Uh, Last one I wanted to bring up: Lincoln Riley. Been a lot of talk about him lately. Yeah, his name's been thrown around a whole lot. Man, I know Lincoln Riley is a hell of a coach, and he's everything I want. So here's what I want. I've never thought I'd say this before, but I just believe differently now. I want my head coach to be the play caller, and I want him to be the architect of the offense because nobody can hire that guy away, okay? Yeah. Nobody can, which is the reason Franklin's not number one for me, all right? It's the reason Stoops is a little bit lower is because if you have a great defensive coach or if you have an a, 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 a CEO type like a Franklin now, every time you have a great outstanding offensive season, somebody's just going to hire your OC away, your play caller away, and then you just do what Saban does. Every year or two, he's just got to rotate those guys in, and and it's just that's just really hard to do. All right, We're not Alabama. We don't have the talent to be able to let anybody sit in the OC chair and just run it. Okay, We have to actually build and develop something. So that's why I want my head coach to be the architect, to be the head call, head coach and the play caller. Lincoln Riley would make those things for me. Personally, I have qualms with the man Lincoln Riley is. I think he is incredibly hypocritical, and you know those things matter to oh, me, yeah. and they bother me. Just like, with, but, but here's the thing. With Urban Meyer, I would swallow the pill. I would sell my soul, and I would say, you know what? He, I, I'm going to tell you this. When he's hypocritical at LSU, I would call him out on that bullshit. Okay. Yeah. If if we had a star freshman taking over for a, a a junior guy that he doesn't want to transfer out and he's saving feelings, I would make it abundantly clear. You put the star out front. This is a meritocracy. We're not here for feelings. We're not here for whatever. And if we're better than the guy that's that we're we're benching and he wants to transfer, you allow him to transfer anywhere he wants to go. He's not the best player for us, and I don't give a damn. Right is right and wrong is wrong, and it doesn't matter if it's my team or somebody else's. Yeah, but those are my problems with Lincoln Riley. It it makes sense. I understand where you're coming from as far as wanting to hire an offensive guy, and I think that's why a lot of people have gone that direction here lately. I do think, and now hindsight's always twenty twenty, but I believe if Brady had stayed there longer than just the one season, uh, you could have built an offensive philosophy at LSU that would not require 
bringing in a great C time after time after time, right? No, so what, no, no. How do you keep Brady there, though? That's the thing. Brady well, that, had one thing. good season. Yeah. It was his first full-time job he's ever had, and the NFL hired him. Yeah, no, no, no. That's you, what I'm saying. Th- this is why like, you can't do that. This that's why you can't do that. No, no, I, I totally understand you. I'm saying, like, Alabama got lucky with able or with being able to keep Lane Kiffin for three seasons. Lane that's Kiffin, right. what he implemented at Alabama is what, what they you're are doing still now is running. What, that's right. That's right. Like it, yeah, they just brought in different guys to run it. That's right. So they've that's got their own one. scheme, their own thing. Bill O'Brien is not running his own offense. No, he's like, running he's lanes. Not, yeah, it's the same thing over and over. Yeah, I, but that's I, why Lane's. That's why Lane's my first choice. Now I don't yeah. think Lane's going to get the job now because the president has made it abundantly clear he wants a legacy hire. They might go a, a minority route, but I do oh. think it means. I do think it means that if you don't choose a minority, whoever you choose has to be squeaky clean. It can't be anybody with any baggage, which means you're taking Hugh and you're taking Lane out of the conversation. Yeah, and that part I don't like because I like those guys. Yeah, no, it it does make sense. Uh, who who do you think is the most likely candidate? I mean, I, I don't. I, that's I, that's impossible. If Woodward was picking by himself, I'm going to tell you this. I've heard this report by too many people that I actually believe and trust. There's a lot of guys that have information, and there's a lot of guys that know shit. Okay, and those are two different things. They were after UCLA. He went to boosters and said, "Can I get the buyout?" I need $20 million. Can you come up with $20 million? And they said, we'll get back to you. They waited a week after Auburn. They called them. They said, we got the money, but we want to know the list. I need to know the list of who you're calling before you. Mainly, they really want to make sure you ain't calling fucking Jimbo, right? Because we don't, we will not give you the money and we will fire you. And he gave them two names. Lane was number one. Bill O'Brien was number two. Those were the two names he gave, and I believe if he called both of them, they would both come. And so I think that's one and one A for if Woodward was making the pick. I believe now that the president has gotten involved. I don't think they're going to allow him to hire Wood, uh, uh, Lane. I, I I hope that's wrong, but that's what I believe. I don't think they're going to allow it. And Bill O'Brien could be... Could be interesting. Bill O'Brien would fit the would fit the mold of he's he's not the minority, but he is as squeaky clean as you can get, and he has an unbelievable track record. You know of of those things. The way he handled Penn State, it's impossible to to throw any stones at him at all. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I think that that could be one of the more likely uh, scenarios. The two I, the two names that were given after that once. The 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 president weighed in were Mel Tucker and and James James Franklin. Franklin. So those those are the four names that we know. Now here's why you're hearing all of the Mario Cristobal, Dabo Sweeney, all this bullshit. Woodward and Jimmy Sexton are personal friends. Not not we've done a lot of deals together because I've hired a bunch of Sexton guys. It's personal close friends. If 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 I was the, the the AD and you were the agent, the super agent, okay, we we hang out outside of work. So every Jimmy Sexton uh, client is gonna. That's why Mario Cristobal's name is getting thrown out there. The only yeah. reason anybody's bringing up Dabo is because of that. I believe Lincoln Riley is the exact same thing. I believe the only reason any of those names are being brought up is so those guys can get raises. That's it. That's all. That makes sense. It makes sense I believe because, there are four people yeah. that are actually have a legitimate chance at getting this. I believe it'll be one of those four. I don't see anybody outside of those four. All right. So the the four again: Mel Tucker, James Franklin, Bill O'Brien, and you said Kiffin. Yep. So and okay. I, well, I only say that because I know Kiffin was number one on his list when he gave the boosters the list, and they said, "Here's the twenty million." Yeah, I could uh, I could get down with it. I could get down with it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.